When you're learning Greek, there are so many charts for you to learn, and it can feel so overwhelming. There has to be a better way. I think it's helpful to think about Greek verbs like Lego bricks. In this video, I'm going to show you how Greek verbs are built and how to simplify our memorization so that we don't have to rely on just kind of a brute rote memorization. We can simplify that process and help in our understanding and our memory of Greek verb paradigms. I'm JC Schroeder and this is Bite Size Seminary. It might be tempting to think of each type and form of a Greek verb as being its own singular entity. Well, there is some truth to that. If you can recognize the different components of a Greek verb that make up that Greek verb, your life will be so much easier. So think of each of these components as different Lego bricks that kind of snap together. And depending on the type of the verb, you'll need to include or exclude certain bricks or components. So instead of just trying to memorize every form of each paradigm, you can simply memorize uh, the formula or the Lego bricks recipe for that type of verb. Let's take a look at it. But if we're going to talk about Legos, we need something. There we go. Let's start here with the standard present active indicative verb with our trusty old buddy, Luo, I lose. And just for simplicity, let's use the first person plural form, luamen. So this form has the base stem of the verb. A lot of the time, this stays consistent across tense forms and voices, but sometimes there are changes. Luo is, is nice to us because it's super regular and doesn't have any of those annoying changes. So we have the stem here then the connecting vowel, and then the personal endings, luamen. A lot of people just memorize the connecting vowel along with the personal endings, which is fine. I, I encourage that, but it is helpful, I think, to at least be able to differentiate the different parts of the verb. Now, if we wanted to see the aorist active indicative, we would need to add and change some bricks. So for instance, we still have the same stem, but we need to add an epsilon, the augment, to the front of the verb. Then we need to remove that connecting vowel, those orange bricks, and add the sigma alpha form marker. You can kind of think of the alpha as like a connecting vowel. It, it isn't, but it's like it. But in reality, it is a part of the form marker the sigma alpha. Then finally, we need our secondary active personal endings, which for this form is actually the same ending, but are different for some of the other endings. Now our aorist active indicative would be elusamen. Now, what about if we wanted an aorist middle indicative verb? Well, we would keep the same elements with the epsilon augment. We'd have the stem, and then we'd also have that sigma alpha form marker, but we would need the middle personal endings. So we would need to change those blue bricks on the end for the personal endings. And then if we wanted an aorist passive indicative verb, we would need to again, keep that epsilon augment, that same stem, but instead of the sigma alpha form marker, we're going to replace that with the theta eta form marker and change the personal endings again back to what are actually, for the most part, the same endings as the aorist active. Now, let's do one final example here. If we had a perfect active indicative verb, we would remove that augment and we would take the initial letter of the stem and reduplicate it and we would put an epsilon in between. That's not your augment, it's just to help glide from the reduplicated letter. Then we would need to replace the sigma alpha or the theta eta form marker with the kappa alpha of the perfect. So your perfect active indicative first person plural would be lelu common. Now, this is not exhaustive. There are a bunch of different combinations that we could use and show, but this just hopefully just shows you kind of a, a new way to think about how verbs are constructed so that it makes the memorization process easier for you. We can't totally eliminate memorization, 
but this can help cut down on the amount of it that we have to do, which is a huge win. So the point here is instead of trying to just brute memorize the whole word, the whole paradigm, every single form, it's better to think about the different components or Lego bricks that you need to add or replace for the specific tense form, voice, or mood that you need. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.